FBI has made serious inroads against organized crime groups. Fred Graham talks with Director William Webster about what progress has been made. Because the leadership of organized crime is well insulated, we're employing an approach that includes long-term investigations and the use of such sensitive techniques as selected informants, undercover operations, and court-authorized wiretaps. Today, the Attorney General has made available to you the details of the most significant case involving heroin trafficking by traditional organized crime that the federal government has ever developed with the aid of local law enforcement. In the four years between those two announcements, the combined efforts of the Justice Department and the FBI have begun making serious inroads against organized crime. Major indictments have been brought against entire organized crime families. William Webster directs the FBI in its effort to cripple organized crime in America. He joins us this morning to talk about it. Uh, to my knowledge, there's never been as many prosecutions of the big shots, alleged big shots in organized crime. Now, you, you mentioned techniques. Is it techniques or more than that that's caused this? Well, I think it's an overall thrust, uh, which I described early on in, in uh, my role uh, as reaching beyond the streets. It's important not just to pick off the little button men or street people involved in these enterprises, but to get through them, through the heavy layer of insulation, up to the top figures in organized crime. Part of the reason for doing this is that uh, to, uh, to particularly in traditional organized crime, is to break this mystique uh, that's produced the code of silence. Omerta. Yes. You know, uh, respect. Are you and doing that? Protection. We are. And we're right. getting cooperation. How do, you, how do you know you're, other than you're getting cooperation? Uh, does it affect the way they operate and what they do? Yes, it does. It uh, does. And, uh, and uh, well, it's making it more difficult for them to meet. Uh, they still have to talk to each other uh, in one form or another, and we have techniques for dealing with that. Uh, and it's, 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 it's proving to under people uh, that they're not as safe, they're not as secure uh, as they used to be. You know, I've covered a lot of these over the years, and it always seemed to me that if you got someone high up, he moved out, the organization stayed in place. A lot of people got promoted, and I've seen cases where an elderly mafiosi, if that's the way to put it, was taken out by prosecution, and young blood came in, and the organization was more vibrant. How do you know that's not happening? Well, I suppose in certain cases it might be happening, but uh, they're in a state of disarray. If we can keep them in a state of disarray, their ability to plan, to project, uh, and to deliver the goods uh, is, is going to be at risk. Uh, I think that uh, the country has, has felt for some time we were just playing around with small fry. Uh, now there's been a quantum leap in the number of arrests and indictments and convictions and a quantum leap in the number of top players of these organizations who are being taken out. What well, is it too early to see if it's really going to affect the amount of crime that's left? We really have never been able to measure the amount of crime attributable to organized crime. Now, various businesses and organizations have attempted to quantify. It's in the billions of dollars. Uh, organized crime uh, in drugs is probably uh, is estimated to be second only to Exxon in size. But we do know from, from the uh, areas where we've, where we've made inroads, where we know what's going on, uh, that the dollars are substantial. Uh, the, the fear, the intimidation, the coercion, uh, the corruption that comes along with organized crime uh, is a, is, continues to be a major threat to this country. You're sort of saying that you really don't know yet. We if... don't know yet, but, we, but we've got to start with what we've been able to do, and what we've been able to do is to, is to indict and convict uh, main players in every major family in the country. Now, organized labor. Mm -hmm. Is there any indication that you've broken or, uh, organized crime's hold on any of these unions that we hear are dominated by? No, we haven't broken it, but we have certainly uh, we've certainly made a major uh, a major dent uh, in uh, in these activities, and we've we've served them with notice that they they can't do this uh, without uh, the risk of uh, prosecution and imprisonment as they have before. We've can arrested and indicted and convicted the heads of major unions who've been playing around with organized crime figures. Uh, labor racketeering is one of the one of the areas and its association with organized crime, one of the areas that I think is still out in front of us. 
Uh, I can't point to that with, as I can with some of the achievements in drugs, for instance, in organized crime. But we have had them. They're coming through now. We're indicting leaders, union leaders, associated with organized crime. But, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a downer because you keep talking about individual successes but not overall uh, victory. Well, yeah, I, I, simply because I don't think we should overclaim. I don't think we have a business. It's not our business to overclaim that we've put something to rest that's been with us for a long, long time. Uh, I think the, the question is, are we, are, is our focus in the right place? And clearly it is. And are we able to get results? And clearly we are getting results. If you want to start on the West Coast and you go all the way to the East Coast, you're seeing convictions of people who had thumbed their noses at the American public who had corrupted our public officials, uh, were able to get contracts uh, in uh, construction industries uh, the, where the government was dealing out the contracts, were able to, uh, to corrupt the casinos in Las Vegas, now moving into Atlantic City. We're getting not only the, the, the organized crime people, but we're getting the public officials who are willing to be corrupted. So the good news is that at least society has the satisfaction of saying these people who live on crime, some of them, are going to jail. Absolutely. Uh, even though we're not really, maybe we don't know yet if we're cracking the system. Uh, do judges go too easy on some of these? I've read reports that people uh, who are organized crime figures often don't get very long sentences. Well, I think we're seeing, if, the, if that was the case, I think we're seeing a shift in this. And we're seeing uh, that uh, where corruption is involved, substantial penalties. Now, a they, circuit judge out in Chicago given 15 years just a couple of weeks ago. Are they able to run the mob from the prison? Some are. Some have tried to. <laughs> I think the prisons are making, the prison officials are making it more difficult to do that today. And of course, uh, with our uh, degree of uh, involvement and uh, investigative effort, uh, it, it's increasingly difficult to do that. The National Crime Commission, and the so-called commission, now I'm not talking about the organized crime commission yes. by the president, I'm talking about the so-called commission Yes. Uh, that uh, exists to, uh, to uh, manage the various traditional crime families is not functioning well at all today. Nightwatch will continue with a special on organized crime. David Copperfield.